Today is June 18th, 2024. The Lawrence Board of Zoning Appeals is called to order at this time. Before we get started, we have to elect a president and a vice president. The floor is open for nominations for president. I'll move Becky Lytle be president. Second. And thank you very much for your past service. You got a tough job. <laughs> you do a great job with it. Thanks, Tom. I second. Thank you, Eugene. Do we have any other motions any, for any other nominations? Nominations. Thank you. So, hearing none, we'll uh, do a hand vote. All those in favor? Anyone opposed? Okay, Becky. Welcome to the president. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Again. <laughs> No, I don't think so. No, no, because we have a Then we need nominations for vice president. I'll nominate Eugene West. Is there a second? I'll second that. <laughs> Renee. Any other motions for nominations? Hearing none by hand vote. All those in favor? Welcome to Vice President. There's no time I guess to I'm be. Just we shocked. don't have to vote. I didn't see that coming. Board. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was just saying, you have to vote for yourself. Yeah. I was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now we need a motion and a second for the approval of the minutes from January 16th. Since we have two new board members, the three of us, Faith, Tom, and me, will vote on um, the minutes. So I'll need a motion and a second. I move to approve the minutes of the January 16, 2024. I, I will second, but I have one question. Sure. The, the minutes have that, that Story June will be moved in 180 days. Um, does anybody know if it's been moved? I do not, but I'll check on it. Okay. Because we're running approaching 180 days. Right. Yeah. I'll true. check on that. Okay. So I need, Faith did a motion, we need a second. Tom second. Tom second, second. okay. Question. All those in favor, all, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Minutes stand as written. If you've not done so, please sign in in the back of the room and anyone wishing to speak tonight, please stand and raise your right hand. <clears throat> Do you swear? or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, answer with I do. Thank you. Do we have any special requests tonight, continuance, withdrawals, or waivers? None that I'm aware of. Okay. Then we will hear the petition. 24 LSV-02-9559 Pelham Pike, a variance of development standard of the City of Indianapolis Zoning and Subdivision Ordinance Chapter 744, Article 4, Section 04D6A4, to allow crushed compacted gravel as a permanent surface over the entire site to the north of the pond. Good morning, Board of Zoning Appeals. I am Dan Kozlowski. I am attorney for the petitioner, and I am also president of the corporation that is the petitioner. So I have a dual role here tonight. My offices are at uh, 1220 uh, Waterway Boulevard. And as uh, mentioned, the case is uh, 24 LSV02. Um, in brief, uh, we were here for two things. Uh, we, we have applied for two things. We applied to have the, uh, the zoning change from C5 to C7 is in the purview of the of the BZA and also for a variance to allow us to have gravel as a permanent um, uh, ground cover I guess would be the right term uh, for some of the site uh, here um, as it turns out I think we, we have a report from staff that somehow administratively without anyone knowing exactly um, we administratively changed the zoning, or the, the zoning was changed from C5 to C7, so I think that's off the table. And Renee, I'm going to defer to you. Is that Yep, is that I'm correct? pulling that up now so you can all see it for yourselves. The um, zoning of the parcel is D2, C4, and C7. 
It shows a rezoning back in 1992 and in, again in 1999. When you research those, it shows going from the C5 to the C7, along with the Coron's property and this property all did some rezoning at that time. And, and I think for some reason it looked in the public records like it was just C5, but I think that was an abbreviation. So, yeah. um, so you know, it goes into that category of better to be lucky than good, I guess. So, <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll focus on the, on the variance. Um, only in this case. Uh, I want to give a, a, a brief history of, of uh, this site or a, or a little bit of an uh, understanding of what we're going to do. And I know you guys have had all the paperwork, so we can answer questions on that when it comes up, and I don't want to uh, go too long on this. But um, this site uh, kind of reminds me of the state of Idaho, okay? This site is what got left over when all <laughs> the surrounding sites took the property that they wanted, and that's how it acquired that unusual shape. Um, Renee, can we put the site plan up? This is cool. You guys this have probably seen year. this in your packet <laughs> already. This is cool. This is new for last year. <laughs> and um, I'll wait till it gets up. Sorry. It's all right. Here. There we go. That's that's pretty good. Yeah, let me zoom out so um, I can actually see it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so kind of at the north end is is the the part um, that uh, where you see Pendleton Pike, and as you can see, we have no frontage on Pendleton Pike. Our frontage is 62 feet on. Is it 64th Street? I think it is. 52nd. 52nd. Guessing it. Um, and actually, that will not, we are not asking for a curb cut, even though that's our, that's our frontage, that will not be an entrance. Going back, and I know this because I was the attorney for the owner of this property, Pendleton Pike Partners, going back almost 20 years, when this was all uh, originally subdivided, our site, the site that you're here to hear the zoning request on, uh, the variance request on, was part of lot two. And um, it was granted an easement, an access easement onto Pendleton Pike. And that access easement runs between what's now the Marathon gas station. Originally, that was a built as a Sunoco. That was the first development on this overall site. And the Dollar General, which is right next to it. So if you see that curb cut, it's a big curb cut. And it was uh, expensive and it was hard to get. But, but one of the rationales was that that curb cut will serve all of the site. And so here we are years later, and that's how we are going to access our site. You will not see this site from Pendleton, and you really won't see it from the backside either because our intent is to put up a, f a perimeter fence along the whole, the whole property. Irvington Group, Inc. is a landscaping and grounds maintenance company, and our work is all done, 100% done out of state. We are a creation of the SBA, if you will. We are a service-disabled, veteran-owned small business, and we are a hub zone small business. And know it or not, this site is a hub zone. And if you are a hub zone business, you have to locate, among, among other requirements, the SBA requires you to locate in a hub zone area. We are currently leasing space at 1220 Waterford, which is a hub zone and won't be a hub zone for very long. And that puts us at risk, and we're going to have to move. This site, we're purchasing. And the SBA recognizes that that can be a hardship, even if the economic development continues to happen in the, in the neighborhood, which I fully expect it to happen. I've watched Pendleton Pike grow up, as you guys have. I've watched it develop. It's doing well. And it will probably come off of the hub zone list. But if we buy it, we get grandfathered for 10 years. And that's what we're counting on. Because in 10 years, uh, like I said, I'm the, I'm the president, I'm the disabled veteran. Uh, in 10 years, uh, I will be uh, 73 years old and I will be retired. So at that point, our strategic partner, Alex Lewis, who's here to testify, my son-in-law, by the way, who's been in the landscaping business for over 10 years and does landscaping in the Indianapolis and Lawrence area, will probably take over that operation. 
If Alex is a complete failure, we'll sell the site, but we're not. <laughs> we're kind of hoping that he stays on. Um, if he needs the hub zone, that'll be his problem to deal with. I'm, I'm kind of looking at that 10-year horizon to retirement. And after that, the younger generation takes, takes over. Um, this site, uh, from the, if, if we ob obtain the zoning um, and we get the gravel lot, um, we will move in as quickly as possible. We will build, can we go back to the site and kind of show you what we got planned here. We're going to build a small, not build, but we're going to probably move one of those um, offices that gets permanently, you know, that's, that's rebuilt. I think uh, they, they've called them uh, schoolhouse buildings, I, I think is the best I, I've heard. And we're going to put that behind the marathon. You probably won't even see it with the fence. You won't even see that building. But it will be permanent. That's not a, it's not a construction trailer. Mm -hmm. That's going to be permanent there with, with water, sewer, uh, heating and air conditioning, electrical, the whole thing. And um, that, that building will be occupied by my business and also by Alex's business for security. We're going to, our intent is to fence around the entire site, including all, hopefully, all of the pond. Now, if you look on the site, that pond is about 80% on our property and about 20% on the Bell Tire site. So what I'm going to hope to do is work out a deal with Bell Tire where we can go ahead and fence that in for safety purposes. If, if they don't, and, and I'm, I'm told they're probably open to this, if they're not, we'll figure out something to do and cut off that 20% of that. That's a perfect, perfect picture to see it. So okay. the you see the red perimeter. Right in, like literally right Yeah, behind. that's where the office building so will go. if you look at mm -hmm. this plan, and that plan, that's why I was doing that. You could see kind of the orientation mm -hmm. that and, he's. And that pond kind of comes and goes as the rain comes and goes. So when the, when the rain is up, it's 100% on our property, but when, or when the rain is down in the middle of summer, um, it, it gets very small. But in uh, the spring and the fall, when the rains come, it pushes over to Bell, Bell Tire. I, I'm hoping, and from what I've heard, they're a reasonable company. They're going to see the value of us paying for the fence and putting the entire pond under, even, even part of their property, under the fence. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to enter into those negotiations until I acquire the property, but that's, that's our intent. The gravel that we're asking for is only going to go over a portion of the site. It has to go under where the building goes, because we have to bring that building up, uh, up in grade. It has to go where the trucks will pull in to the, uh, uh, through, the, uh, through the curb cut. And then that small, see that little part that says gravel over there? That, that, that's the turnaround. That's where Alex is going to park his trailers. So we want that to be gravel as well. The rest of it will be left uh, open um, for places to store mulch, um, other gravel, other building or, uh, uh, landscaping material, and to put uh, trees, bushes, things of that nature, and Alex can talk about that if there's any questions on some of the plants that will be out there. Let me address the issue of why uh, we hope that, that you will grant us uh, the gravel in that spot. I have three good reasons and one bad reason for it. So let me start with my strong argument. The strongest argument is that pond is not a natural pond. That is a retention pond, and it services all of that original property. So it services Bell Tire, it services um, Marathon, uh, it services the uh, fish store and uh, the hotel, and all of those hard tack surfaces, all of those uh, paved uh, surfaces drain into this pond. Uh, I didn't design this, engineers designed this. If we put hard tack down on our site, it's going to throw off the engineering. I don't know if that means it won't work anymore. I don't know anything. All I know is gravel absorbs water, and if we can have gravel, it will not change the engineering that was originally designed for that pond when all these sites add some use to it. That pond will continue to work. If I throw that off by putting down a hard surface, I, I don't know what happens next. I, we have to get an engineer in. I have to talk to my neighbors. I don't know what's going to happen. So I hope you see the, the, the rationale there. Second rationale is um, this could be a site that Alex will show his customers. And so putting down gravel is what he does. 
That's what he does as part, part of his landscaping. And so the idea of showing gravel uh, in a finished state when it's compacted and how it interacts with, with plants and other landscaping material is something that'll be of value from a marketing standpoint. And so we want you to take that into consideration. My third good argument, I think, is the fact that we're, 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 we're going to fence this entire site. And if somebody has a problem looking at a gravel parking lot, the fence is going to be uh, opaque. Um, the, it's a, it'll be chain link, but it'll have those little slats in it or whatever they put in it so you can't see through it. So hopefully nobody's even going to notice it. Okay. And then my bad argument for it is our neighbors have it too, so we want it. Uh, you know, it's like that's the kind of argument you'd hear from your child or your grandchild. <laughs> so those are, those are my rationale as to, as to why um, we hope that you'll find in favor of the gravel lot. Um, I think uh, with that said, um, I will answer any questions, or um, Renee, that's, that, that uh, concludes uh, petitioner's case in chief. In the, I'm getting there. It says the gravel is permitted for one year, but after one year, the parking lot must have a durable and dust-free surface. Are that, you? That's the current zone. Yes. That's currently what's what's okay. allowed. So you're saying we're that saying we don't we do not want to pave this this lot ever. We want it to absorb the the water. Okay. So, so that's, that's the that's the variance. We're that's requesting. your variance. That's, that's the variance. Because is, that was part of the original proposal. The, the original proposal was it was going to absorb water. That's right. That's how, that's how that pond was designed for. That's correct. Now, again, you know, um, it, it, that's my problem, I guess, if the pond doesn't work anymore. But um, if, if we've got the gravel, the chances of it continuing to work are very good, at least according to the engineer. So, Attorney Dan, so is that, because in your finding of facts, you were talking about the current zoning will pose some unfair burden. Is that... The burden, as you're yes, talking about, the exactly. You... Yes, sir. The the, bur the burden is that to require hard tack yeah. would put a burden on that retention pond, and something would have to be done with it. Uh, and, and again, I know they, I know engineers build in these, these, uh, uh, you know, they they build in a little fail safe. But I, I don't know when it's going to fail. I don't know how much rain it's going to take to fail. All I know is that right now the engineers are telling me. You leave, you leave that to be absorbed, it will work. Do you have one of your engineers here tonight? I don't. Oh, I don't. Anyone with no. the water? It's on, I don't know if it was on record. I don't know. That pond was built, I want to say, uh, uh, I want to say it was built uh, maybe 18 years ago, and, and it's worked fine. At the time it was built, so if I'm understanding it correctly. And by the way, thank you for your service. Thank you for saying um, but at the time it was built, it was intended that all the property around it, including your parcel, drainage would go into this yes. retention pond. Yes. At that time, now when you add gravel and, I mean, when you add blacktop and that, the, right. what the engineers say is that it doesn't get absorbed right. into the ground, which gravel allows it to go down into That's the right. ground. But instead will run off. That's correct. So it runs off into this pond. Now at the time they built that pond, did they have, was that all blacktop, or is that something that came No, with? it was, what was anticipated, as I, as, as I understand it, again, I don't have the, and I don't even know if the engineer is still alive who designed this, but as I understand it, the, the idea was the retail sites that would have access to Pendleton Pike would have a typical parking lot, as they do now. And, and as they got zoning approval, that was taken into consideration by your predecessors. This site was always left to be um, property that was going to be absorbed, uh, would not have hard tech, I guess that's what I'm saying. Um, so um, that, was, that was the intention, and, and so that's what we want to keep it at. Um, but we don't know that for sure. So have you had an engineer look at it in its no. current state? No, no, no. So I we haven't. have no idea. Aaron, just to. Um, if the variance is approved and they purchase the property, they will have to submit plans to DPW right. for review for and approval. Right. And part of that is stormwater review. Okay. So we so. will make sure prior to issuing any permits that the pond as it is now will be able to handle 
any runoff from this property if you decide to make it hardscaped or even if you allow it to be gravel we will make sure that it's it's adequate enough to handle the development of this property and that'll occur in whatever way that all occurs through permitting so what happens if dpw says that and forgive me because it's my first time on this right so, so what happens if dpw says that let's say we pass and say okay it can be gravel right what we don't have is the professional opinion from dpw that well you could have it be blacktop and so it wouldn't affect it we won't know that until after we plans have been submitted yeah. with all the calculations and I think part of this is before they purchase the property, getting the variance lined up. They don't want to purchase the property, spend the money on the engineering and the plan development before they have approval to develop the property. That's exactly right. And the other thing is that the hard tech doesn't work for our business, okay? If you look at landscaping and, and grounds maintenance sites, they're all gravel, okay? We're not asking for anything unusual that's different from any other business of our nature. So it's not just the engineering. It could work in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. We could find out when we go for permitting or if, if there's an outbuilding or something that we have to get a permit for that even if we have gravel, it still might affect that pond. Right. In which case, we're gonna have to dig that out to be a bigger pond, and that'll be on us. But so that'll come through during the permitting process. So you're gonna have to do engineering if we, if we approve your variance request, right. you're going to have to do engineering stuff when you get to DPW. Right. If we say, no, this has to be asphalt. Right. Then if you say, no, I'm not buying it. Okay. If, if you say, no, it goes back to the owner, and I'm out of here. I haven't spent that much money, and I'm not going to put down hard tack. Right. We'll find another site somewhere else. Okay. Well, and my only concern is that this site seems to have been developed without thinking in terms of everything coming together and right. what the future is going to hold right. for it and everything else. That's right. And so now we're kind of attacking it further, more piecemeal, and that's why I'm trying to wrap my head around this to figure out, I mean, certainly, uh, it's a hub area, but I, I think you very wisely okay. recognize that that area is changing. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and I'm so glad to hear you're going to have the solid fencing or the things that go through right, there. Right, the opaque. Right, because on um, across the street in the, in the back there, is it's a trailer park, but that parcel is very pretty. It's very landscaped, sure. very nicely, mm -hmm. and all of that. And there are people we, living. We hope that they'll be our customers. Yeah. So, um, so you know, and so I do think that that's going to, in the future, possibly present some other options to the development of the area. So that that's what I'm trying to wrap my head around. I would say this for most retailers. Having access to frontage is the most important thing to them. There's zero on this. This has been for sale for over almost 20 years, mm -hmm. and there's been no takers. And that's one of the reasons. It's, it's almost like this site is designed for one thing. I can't think of anything else that would work there other than a landscaping company. So that's our proposal. We think it looks good. We think gravel looks good for landscaping. That's what people want. Um, and that's for you guys to decide whether that's what you want in your, in your city. Okay. So. And I have a question for staff. Um, so does the zoning um, ordinances, do those prohibit, like, the height of stacks? Like if you yes, ma'am. Okay, great. Yes, ma'am. And um, if... So make sure I'm understanding this. If we vote yes, then you will go ahead and purchase the property. Yes. No matter without knowing what DPW is going to say. Well, we'll make we'll think. I know the worst case scenario is I got to dig that pond out a little bit bigger. We can handle that cost. Okay, we can do that. So is there have have, have we considered the possibility of having this variance run with the owner rather than with the land? That can be something that you. We can do as that a as a board. Right. And would you have any objection to that? We would. That it would be we want it to run with the land because the, ne because the next owner, I, I, I don't know how long I'm going to live. I don't know how long this business is going to be in business. If I've got to sell this, I, I, I want to be able to sell it as, as capable of th that, that as long as the next owner will act within 
the current zoning that they can that they can have uh, the ability or the uh, they they will have the variance of the gravel as as a possibility because I I can tell you this just in, in working with the owner if it sells it's going to sell to something like a landscaping company and they're going to want gravel as well I mean if we had if we had our neighbor in here who's got the trailers over there right. he'll he'll tell you why that works for him um, that's him uh, but. You know, with the pond and we've got the water tower and the unusual shape and no access to Pendleton Pike, there's just not a lot of uses for that. And my proof of that is it's been for sale for almost 20 years, no takers. Mm -hmm. I got a use. I can put that to good use. And I'll stay within the current zoning if I can get this variance. So whoever, it, it, C7 encompasses a lot of different uses, doesn't yes, it? And so far beyond like landscaping and all yes. of that so if yeah. we get this and it runs with the land and somebody puts a commercial operation in there you can say that it's specific to a landscaping operation and not make it specific to this owner you could still you can say that I won't buy it I, I want this I want this variance and and that's that's you know I, I understand what you're saying and I, I get it but I don't want the property if I can't resell it if things go bad and, and I guess from a standpoint of the, um, of the board, anything that goes in there, the only variance you're granting is gravel. Everything else has to comply with zoning and has to, and has to pass muster when they go to draw a permit for a building of whatever nature. If you're thinking of a worst case scenario, it probably is something that's outside of the current zoning anyway, or would be stopped in the permitting process. This, I'm, I'm sinking my, my money into this property, and I've got to have a plan B for my family if I die or if this, if, if this is an utter failure. And so that, that's, what, that's what I'm looking for. Sure, and I, and I, I totally understand that, totally. But, I, you know, I'm, I guess my concern is that there comes a point in time when you have to start saying, okay, we're not going to adjust this. It's little section by little section. Well, and I, and I guess the question is, is hard tack so much better than gravel? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it is. I don't know. I think for parents' purposes and dust and all of that type of thing, yes. I mean, the, the lot there, because I, I did go out and take a look at it and mm -hmm. everything. And, this, and the parcel with all the trailers on it, it doesn't appear that they move in and out of there mm -hmm. that much. It looks right. like it's primarily a storage area, so right. there's not mm -hmm. a lot of dust or anything going up there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think you would be, you, you've shown sensitivity to the area by putting in the, the solid fencing so it can't be seen, right. and you're, you've thought about all of that. Um, it's just mm -hmm. that I, I fear that in the future we have no guarantee that we'll get someone who is responsible and who is going to be committed to mm -hmm. helping the area as yourself. Uh, we, you and I both have dealt with businesses. We sure. know where we, we know where that can sometimes go. So that's, that is my concern at this time. Does the board have any other questions? Yeah, have you talked to all your neighbors? Um, I, I have, my client is Ted Kleinmeyer. Ted originally owned all this lot. He has, had a personal relationship for many years with all of the neighbors and has told them what's going on. So uh, through through my client, in essence, and and the the person who currently owns this, the owner of the property, yes, um, it's been a strong relationship. And and by that, I and I don't mean uh, the site. The original site ended where the guy with the trailers with with the gravel parking lot to the east. I guess it would be. So I I can't say. I have. have That's had not co-run. The, the guy is. with the trailers. That is yeah. co-run. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's co-run. Yeah. Yeah. Co okay. And yeah. just for informational purposes, mm -hmm. that entire lot next door, just to the east, co-run's lot is gravel. Yeah. 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 There, you you had right. mentioned there's not a lot of movement. There's movement every single day through there. There's a lot of movement. A lot yeah. of movement. It's trailers going in and out and. Right, they've constantly This got, is a storage area over here. Yeah, right here. This is where all their residents keep their boats and their RVs. It's all gravel. And then these are all the trailers that they have moving in and out of their parks. And so there's a, they're, 
They're always moving new trailers in. I have one over in Parkwood that my daughter lives in, so I'm there getting my grandkids every day. I see them pulling so the new trailer trailers trailer park in. stores trailers over there? Mm -hmm. Before they set them in their parks? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just for reference, so that no, thank you know you. that there is the property right next door. Has, there's a precedent, is what I'm trying to show. Faith. I only have one question. <laughs> I see her very patiently. Just one question, one small question. Uh, no, I'm looking at your map, and it's like a Tetris piece. I, you know, it's very um, aesthetic, right? Um, I see it's a 25-foot gravel pathway that you're trying to put. Yeah, it's not really a pathway. It, it's it's kind of a turnaround. That would be where the That's trailers are, are parked. So, so my only question is, is it going to be 25 feet, and how many feet then is it between the edge of that and the pond? It's probably... Boy, I don't know. Renee, do you, can you judge that? I mean, it looks like 25, 25. I'm going to say so it's 25 more like 50. feet. I mean, to the pond, you're about it's 100 feet, feet, 93 feet. Yeah. It's deceptively longer than it looks. Yeah. So 25 feet, you're still going to have, you know, quite a bit of space. Okay. And, and if you look between. at it, it's kind of uh, domed. So the, the, the middle is higher up. And, and I think that's just, that was dirt that probably came out of where the pond was. And it, so it got domed up. And so that's where we want to put the gravel, make sure it's nice and high. They'll still be green on both, on, actually on all, on three sides of it. Um, the pond side, the uh, Dollar General side, and the Bell Tire side. Okay. Yeah, it, yeah I couldn't tell from the, from the photo or from the, the blueprint or whatever you, mm -hmm. whatever you would call it. Um, site plan. Site plan. Perfect. Thank you for the term. Um, my only concern, and this, and this helps me with the measurement, is that in light of the purpose of a retention pond, I just wanted to make sure that the gravel was inset enough that it wouldn't be then tumbling into right, the retention right. pond. Yeah, I don't, you know, uh, I can't say I've been out at the site every time there was a large storm as to, you know, how high it goes, but it's springtime now. And so what, what you're kind of seeing, that's, that's it right there. That's kind of it. So um, I don't know. We've probably had a normal rainy season. Sometimes we have more rain, and so it gets a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. But um, at least my recollection, this is, you know, not, maybe I'm not the best person to testify to this. I've, I've never seen it much higher than that. So is 25 feet accurate for the width? Because if you've got 100 feet and only 25 is going to be gravel, and yeah. the farthest 25. That's right. Yeah. Okay, then that satisfies my question. Thank you. Are there any utility easements? I don't know what piping for a water tower yeah. looks like. Yeah, we, we will have to probably grant that. Um, what I've been told by the owner is that the uh, electricity comes, um, is, is behind uh, Marathon, so we don't have far to go. We wouldn't have far to grant that. Um, the sewer, I don't remember, uh, because I remember I dealt with this myself like 18 years ago. I think it's somewhere near that uh, common, um, that, that, uh, that curb cut, somewhere near there. So whatever it is, we'll, we'll deal with it. We'll grant it. I didn't phrase my question right. Wait, you have a water tower yes. there. Where's all that piping go? It, it, it's not, it's on, not your on your property? property? I don't know. The city, but you haven't the city run into that. an easement, I guess. You've... That's, not, that's not part of the site. Hook up. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Well, it, it was not granted as an easement. He's going to have water pressure. That property is, is uh, fee simple with somebody else. Yeah. You guys own it, I and, think. And there's your selling point, is your water pressure, isn't it? <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that's, that's, a good, okay. that's a good point. Found for landscaping. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, it's, so, and I'm sorry, but so I'm trying to, so I dealt with floodplains and was and was on the council with the city when we were getting that all removed sure. and everything. So I know the whole thing about the runoff, but I also know that um, FEMA and that was very adamant about not building things in the path, even if you build a structure, because then that causes, if it's coming from asphalt, mm -hmm. it causes the water to divert different directions. And the placement of your trailer mm -hmm. and the placement of your was the other one a, it's a pole barn, I guess? Well, the pole barn is a future, again, okay. possibly sometime in the future, right? So, so that's uh, exactly right because that would that would have hard surface on the roof. That's right. Right. So, um, on the 
little uh, little mm. patch of gravel right here. Mm. So there's not going to be any structure there. No, the the, the 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 small office building and a potential pole barn are the only structures that we envision for this thing. Okay. And the, and the pole barn would be this is one story light assembly. Um, Alex can speak to it. Basically, the, the assembling of uh, gutter you know gutter pieces, things like that. I think that's right. Would that be correct. Then have to have a concrete slab. Uh, I don't know. Is the intent to put it? We'll, we'll cross that'll that. Be we'll, that'll be DPW's future. That'll be DPW's future. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Permit. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yes, so. yes ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That's correct. So it'll have what all through the call runners, concrete runners, like co-runs and the wheel estates and all of them do. You've got uh, tie-down points that have to be attached to concrete. And so they do like one foot by whatever the width is, runners. And then they can attach to those. How it's normally done, but I'll look at all that whenever they submit plans for the building and make sure that it meets code before we issue. Any other questions? Any plant questions for Alex? <laughs> no, nope. Here. Okay. Thank you. Do we have anybody here for or against the petition? Not having any, we'll hear from the city of Lawrence. Christopher Wilburn. Yes. Uh, good morning. Oh, well, that's not morning. Good evening. <laughs> it's been a long day. It's been a very long day, but um, as I was listening to, thank you for uh, having me here this evening as I was listening to the petition before us, before the body. I want to make uh, the body also aware of there are alternatives to just gravel or permeable um, pavement, which is the cost um, that they may not want to incur. The, the, the challenge with that is, is that um, uh, it, it, it will reduce ecological impact uh, for that particular area. But as we move through this process, please understand that although it's zoned for particular use right now, that doesn't mean that it's going to stay that way in the future. Uh, so I want people, and specifically in this body, and, and to, to to be made aware of that. So, if there if there are specific questions for me, uh, please let me know. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that there are alternatives to just concrete, gravel. There are permeable um, pavement issues that we can use, which which um, are a little bit more expensive. But they the, the the challenge with that is they erode a little bit quicker than would concrete. And I know that may be cost prohibitive, but as we move the city of Lawrence forward, these are some of the things that we're going to be zoning towards. And, the, and, and I can assure you that if you were to purchase the property, we'll be more than happy to welcome the business. We want to work with our, our, our businesses, but we also have um, an obligation to ensure the longevity and prosperity of our city. So, so what kind of alternatives are permeable? Well, there are, um, there are a number of of, you can of do things. pavers. Yeah, you can do um, pavers, and which allow for they're a little bit they're porous and non-porous pavers, which allow for the flow of, of water to kind of filter through uh, the sand, through the sand, et cetera. So there are alternatives, um, and I would like for you to keep that in mind as well when we when we move forward. But there are a number of different techniques that we can employ, and I think um, as we go further down the process, should this body approve that. Uh, the engineering, agricultural engineering, et cetera, ecological impact studies will be done and testing of, uh, of our soil as well. And I do understand, too, that there are additional um, gravel lots in close proximity. Uh, our challenge and my concern is that as we look at uh, the gas station and all of those things that are impacted below ground, below our surface, we don't want to exacerbate an issue should that occur for our future. So future concerns, right? So we're looking at the impact both now and in the future. So I wanted to make that statement if we, if for the record, if that's, that's okay. And if you have questions for me now, we'd be more than happy to entertain them. But I just wanted to make sure that you have those kinds of uh, tools for your toolbox of making these decisions. Yeah, one question. C7 does not allow auto users. Is that correct? Correct. That's correct. C5 is the highest selling for auto, right, auto. retail yeah, well, repair. C7's higher, yeah, but it stops at C. It stops at C5. Okay. 
and they would so it couldn't be used as a car lot in the future. Right, but that's a very good question, and and we don't foresee, um, as far as I'm concerned, or the administration is concerned, altering that uh, to a degree in which it's impacting our businesses so much that we're driving business away. However, we are very very sensitive the surrounding residential areas, commercial areas, and understand that the impact on those communities is important. And we welcome business like this, uh, the, uh, uh, the businesses, specifically this business that wants to relocate here, but we also want to make sure that there's a standard by which we're operating. And that's new for us, we understand that, but it's, we're moving toward it. I do have one other additional question too, because we said it's, it's, it's been 20 years, basically no takers. Do we know that those who have maybe expressed interest why they didn't want to to that's, do anything there? That's a very good question, and we haven't gotten. We Any do feedback, realize that okay. Pendleton Pike, of course, is zoned for specific industrial use, and the mm -hmm. majority of businesses that rest in that particular corridor are commercial in use. Um, what we're trying to do is basically change. And this is maybe forecasting a little bit for you to understand, uh, to a boulevard more so than just a thoroughfare by which people come through and, and, and don't spend taxpayer dollars per se. We, we want to attract businesses. So eventually the plan is, and we haven't revealed this with great specificity, is to move it to a boulevard. And, and we're very concerned with frontage, and we know that this isn't at issue here this evening. However, mm -hmm. we do want to make sure that businesses Keep that general sense uh, in mind. So we are aware uh, that 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 is some, this, if, it's of concern, and we understand that. But as we move forward, infrastructure is always an issue. We don't want to have to repair things when several times in the same area, but we also want to make sure that we're planning for our future and our future growth. So in the vision for advancing forward, um, if this, uh, I mean, what is your thought? Should this be allowed to proceed as gravel? Or yes, I, I believe that once we go through the process, we want the, the land to be purchased. Let's make that very clear. Uh, it's our intent to attract businesses. It's our, to, uh, our intent to attract this particular business. In saying that, we also want to make sure that we're very clear with the planning process, architectural renderings, um, uh, what it looks like in terms of topography, how that we're, we want to be a part of that from the from conception all the way to all the way to the certificate of occupancy should that be <laughs> where we are, where we end up. So this is a little bit unique not for for Lawrence, but not for our surrounding cities, contiguous cities. So uh, this is the direction we're moving in. We welcome the business. If you were to approve that, we would not object. Uh, it is our intent then to move forward and partner with them to understand our expectations as a city and and your expectations as a board. Does that make sense? Yes, no. Does Alex lay anything besides gravel, like permeable surfaces? Like pavers? Pavers or anything that's permeable. You have to come up and speak. I'll speak. I'm paying for it. <laughs> I can afford gravel. That's what I want. That's, 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 it, it, and again, it's, it's, it's for the integrity of the pond. It's for the um, fact, the marketing aspect. This is what his customers want. This is what he does, is put down gravel. If you look at the site, we can't put gravel in the pond. We're not going to put gravel anywhere near, you know, where the surface, if you kind of see the pond, there's where the water is, and then there's the high water mark, okay, which is a good deal of that. We're basically just talking about an area inside a fence that will accommodate the um, currently the small little building. There we go. That's a great. That's a great shot of it. Um, and and the area to, to turn trailers around in, and and the areas where the landscaping material that we sell, which includes gravel, is is there gravel uh, mulch, uh, what pea gravel? What are some of the other things? And, and uh, I guess, I mean, I didn't have much time to read this, but I think we have staff approval on this. So we, we're, we're recommending, yeah. you know, approval. We, we wouldn't be opposed to the board approving the business. This site is a stretch for Alex. 
he conducts his business out of his front yard right now. It's not in Lawrence, by the way, so don't, don't get code enforcement after him. Uh, it's in Fishers, and his neighbors don't like it. This is an acre and a half on a very busy uh, commercial site. And so we want to we want to be successful. We want to go in there. I guess I could promise to pave it with gold dust. We can't afford that. This is what we can afford, and this is what we've asked the city to to approve. And that's what we're asking you guys to approve. Give us a chance. We hope we're successful, and we're going to make you proud to use that site economically, where no one has even attempted to do it for the very reason that it has no frontage and nobody, the gas station or, or the uh, Dollar General or Bell Tire is not gonna give up their frontage for that property. That's Idaho. That's the property they got left over when, it's the only site Ted's got left. Ted and Betsy, Betsy died this year and he wants out. So we kinda wanna, we wanna take that and run. We're asking you to, to, to vote with us and we'll do our best to succeed in that site. And that's all I can say. If we would vote yes, will you uh, commit to working with the city? Absolutely. As you uh, go forward? I walked in here and I heard you take the oath of office. I was in the military for 37 years, mostly in the Guard and the Reserve here in Indianapolis. I know Karen. I, we lived in the same neighborhood for a number of years. I, I've worked in public service my whole life, and I will commit to this. I, I was here in 1981 as a lieutenant in the United States Army. I love your city. I will commit to work with staff, with Renee. I'll commit to work with, with you folks. But I have, to, I have to try to protect my family. You know, if I, if I don't make it, I, I'm, the guy, I'm the guy paying for this stuff. If I don't make it, I've got to have an out. I've got to have something of some economic value, or I will sit with an acre and a half for sale for the next 20 years. So I'm asking you to take a chance on me and take a chance on Alex, that we're going to succeed and become great members, commercial members of your neighborhood. Well, I just, yes, sir. I, I just want to make clear one thing. Um, first of all, I know, I know you, and I know you will be good. I, like I said, my concern is after you. I understand. Secondly, we can't say that the gravel is going to preserve the integrity of the pond because nobody's looked at it. Nobody knows what status it's in. We have no idea. And um, third, I was going to... Um, I'm sorry, you want the aerial back or the... Yeah, and I just have a question about the, the um, right-of-way around the water tower. So I assume... So it's, it's, it's got its own... Whoops. I'm still on Google Maps. It, you know, Sorry. as far as I know, that's not part of our site. It, it's not a, It's not an easement. That's that's not part of our site. The 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 part in yellow is is all right. all that Ted owns. So it is its own parcel, right? So what for are the water the tower. Boundaries of that parcel. I mean, right I'm here. just curious as to how you're gonna. Because I'm sure there's probably they want some space between the water tower and anybody. They have it. They have it fenced out. It's yeah, very clear where they stop and we start. Okay. Yep. This is unusual. I know. It is unusual. It's Idaho. I'm telling you. It's Idaho. <laughs> without the mountain. So, without the mountain, right. See, without any of the right. benefits. The water tower has the same fencing as Caron's, and it's just separated off. There's a little gravel drive to get into it that the utilities use to get in and maintain the, the tower when they need to. So they have their own access and would not be accessing through their property right. here. Right. And again, we would have to, if ever anybody ever wanted a curb cut onto that, they would have to ask for a permit and you'd have From the chance Lawrence. to say no to that. We can put stipulations that they work with the city of Lawrence and try and with the gravel to um, down on the dust and everything and we, like they said we want we, we, we you have to have something solid to put a building on you have to have a, a solid you can't have mud when you come in with the gate and you have to have a spot so he can turn his trailers around that's it I don't want to pay for any more than that I like the grass he'll cut the grass or put down mulch and the aquatic plants and all that nice stuff that that he could show his clients when he brings them on there and says you know, here's how your backyard can look, that kind of thing. 
So I don't want to spend money even on gravel. So I'm going to put as little as possible and try to leave as much of the existing grass as I can. And yeah, we'll work. I mean, I'll park my ass in her <laughs> office every day if I have to. So, you know. Just to be clear, so even with the way it existing now, it hasn't impacted the pond. That's correct. So I mean, correct. You, the just, work great. So you really don't necessarily have to have that's, the that's gravel. Correct. You're just wanting that's that for that's right. cosmetic or easy. Yep. You don't want to park mud or whatever. You that's right. That's it. right. Yes, sir. Um, we could put a commitment on here of work with DPW on development of plans, development plans for the property. Well, what does that do? They have to do that either. Right, but work with them on <laughs> pavers, right? Or well, no, it, it, he's asking for it to be gravel. So if you guys are wanting something other than a gravel, you would need to, you know. But he's he's already said he doesn't want the variance with pavers, or so he's not willing to make that commitment. But he is willing to make a commitment to sit down with Chris, myself our Keith Johnson, our economic development guy, and develop plans that are gonna make the best use of the property. Well, he has to do that anyway, though, because he has to get DPW. Not necessarily, Karen. He, he could go and make plans and submit them and meet the bare minimum requirements. Right. And not sit down and... and or he could come and meet with you guys and say, no, not doing that, goodbye, which is... I, all right. I'm saying is that that's very good. I have Dan will come and he'll talk to you and everything else. But mm -hmm. I putting that in there, I just don't see it as doing anything. This lady have a question. Yeah, my name is Liz Mazur. I serve on the Common Council, and I just wanted to address. I was speaking with Alex before the meeting, um, and he. I don't think he had an opportunity, or he did not take the opportunity to express that he is. The plan is to use this as a model too of landscaping, and he does his landscaping without chemicals and including lots of native plants. And I know there have been great concerns about the gravel. Well, if it's done properly around the retention pond, there will be at least a 10 foot buffer of native plants, which will keep the gravel um, stabilized and keep the pond being a better absorb when there's big rains, help it um, collect excess water, and it will be an improvement upon what the site is now environmentally, and there's a lot of flooding here in the city of Lawrence. If this is done properly, from, and what, from what Alex said when we were talking beforehand, this will diminish the, um, some of the water issues we have in Lawrence because the water will be absorbed by the native plants and the gravel will be much better than having um, the concrete or asphalt, which is, um, causes a lot more runoff. So I cannot, I'm not going to say I'm pro or con, but I wanted to make sure that some of you did not get the, the whole picture and I wanted to communicate that to you. Can you come to the mic? This is all out of order. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was on the list to speak. Okay, I asked for remonstrators for or against okay. the petition, and you should have got up at that no, time. I I'm trying to run the meeting here, and people just getting up whenever. Okay. okay? I so, we've heard from the city of Lawrence. The uh, petitioner gets a five minute rebuttal, and then Remonstrators, then you're welcome to, to come up and speak. This is easier to do as a lawyer than as a petitioner. I, say. So I apologize for my outburst. And Renee, I, wa I won't sit in your office every day. Uh, but, but I think this idea of cooperating is to, you know, kind of to cynically say it doesn't mean anything. I would say I don't want to spend money on gravel either. And so if I can get away with a, a plan that the city proposes that allows us basically to put a small building uh, the, the way that we would have to to get a permit anyway, 
to turn trailers around and to, and to keep mud from gathering near the entrance. That's all we want. The rest is going to look like, like landscaping. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Liz, do you have anything else to add? Sir? Okay. Any questions from the board? Do you want to put anything, commitments or anything like this? Just vote on it as is? That's what we have to do because he's already stated he wouldn't agree to any commitments. Okay. The board now will vote on 24 LSV02 9559 Pelham Pike, variance of de development standards of the City of Indianapolis Zoning and Subdivision Ordinance, Chapter 744, <laughs> Article 4, Section 04D6A4, to allow crushed and compact gravel as a permanent surface over the entire side to the north of the pond. I was going to share and I didn't. <laughs> The board has unanimously granted your petition. The, thank you. Lawrence Board of Zoning Appeals is adjourned at this time.